and Tao overflows. We want to discipline our children. We want our children to be disciplined. To us, discipline is the most important thing in life. It does not, but the nature of discipline that I am talking about, not is imposed from outside, instead it evolves out of your own innerness. But we are all interested in creating the discipline, imposing the discipline from outside. And anything imposed from outside is the most dangerous thing. It does not matter if this disciplining is damaging the inherent potential of the child. It does not matter to us. Discipline must evolve from within, not should be imposed from outside. I have a discipline of my own. Nobody imposed that on me or nobody convinced me to be disciplined. But that discipline has its own beauty and fragrance which because it has evolved out of my own growth patterns. This is the way we should help the children so that discipline is born out of their own innerness. Each child is unique, so there cannot be a generalized discipline for every child to be imposed from outside. There are interna internationally acclaimed authors like Miss Judith Martin and others. She wants children to be disciplined, but Miss Judith Martin, I don't know how many times she became Miss I think certainly more than a dozen times she became Miss because no husband could survive her. He will either escape or commit suicide. But one thing is certain, he will certainly make her Miss once again. And she must be very old now. Her book is highly rated by who? Miss Manners Guide to Rearing Perfect child. Perfection is neurotic. Miss Manners Guide to Rearing Perfect Children. Perfection is not the way of life. Totality in whatever you do is the way of life. This book is written by Martin, Judith Martin. Perhaps when she finally became famous and a well-known authority on children, child raving, nobody dared to marry her. Again, because do you think such a person who does not have compassion on young, innocent children, will she have any compassion on husbands? She will train them exactly the way animals are trained, disciplined in circus. We say train. But that is disciplining the, the animals in the circus to their tune. She will make them dance to her tune. And her being a world famous authority, what can the poor husbands do except dance to her tune? This kind of person has existed down the ages around the world, everywhere. You can see it around you. They have prescriptions, recipes, disciplines for everybody, not only for their own contemporaries, but even for future generation that has not yet born, that has not yet born. So what right do they have? They are so idiotic. Although they are known as great authors, sages, and they have given you religions, disciplines, code of conduct, morality, ethics, code of conduct, and they are great lawgivers. But I say to you again, such people are idiots. They do not know the basic facts of the growth of a human being. Only an idiot can think of a generalized way when human being, as far as human beings are concerned. No two human beings have the same potentiality. God has not created man on assembly line. 
each individual that is born or comes into the world is unique in many ways. There is no average human being can be seen anyway, but we want to make them average. I want them to be extraordinary when they are potential and unique in their potentiality. And you will never come across average men. And all these authorities are concerned with average men who does not exist. The average man is just like God, omnipresent and omniscient. You can see all around. This is what they have been trying to do. God is so omnipresent that I have heard about a nun who really understood that God is omnipresent and omniscient. First of all, let me tell you the story of the nun who not only understood that God is omnipresent and omniscient, but she lived whole of her life with this understanding. She used to take shower in a closed washroom with the clothes on. So someone asked, why do you take shower with your clothes on when the door is closed and nobody is seeing? It's a certainty. It is true. Nobody is seeing, but God is seeing because God is omnipresent and omniscient. Such is the understanding of these people. You ask me how to help the child in the right way. Disciplining the child is not the right way, but this is what we all want. Allow the natural potential to grow from within. Out of that, a new stream, the script of discipline will evolve out of him. Once a child is allowed to grow to his potential and is not interfered, there will be no better disciplined person than him. His words will be disciplined, his actions will be disciplined, every aspect of his life will be disciplined. The right way is not to help the child at all, but this will require real courage, tremendous courage, then please do not help the child. Love him, nourish him, let him do what he wants to do. Let him go wherever he wants to go. But if you have trusted him, if you have loved him, nourished him with that fertilizer of your love, and understanding he will trust you he will not hide anything from you I can assure you on the basis of my own experience but your mind will be tempted again and again to interfere and for that you will have good excuses and the mind is very clever in rationalizing and creating excuses if you do not interfere there may be danger he may fall into well, he may fall from the tree, or things like these. That's why that's you go on rationalizing. It is very rare the child will fall into well or from the tree. If it does happen, let him learn on his own experience. If you are really concerned with him, with that, then you can cover the well. Or but do not help the child and do not interfere with the child. The well can be removed. He can be taught how to climb the trees, train him. And then that can be done. All dangers can be re removed that you feel is danger. Do not interfere with the child let him be on his own. You will have to understand some significant growth patterns. That is where my focus is on seven year cycles in life. Life moves in seven year cycles just as earth moves, makes one rotation on its axle in 24 hours. Now nobody knows why 24, not 23, not 22. There is no way to answer anything if the number is 24 today, tomorrow it changes to 25, but the same question will remain staring at you. 
earth makes 20, 365 days to make a round around the sun. Again, number does not matter. Whatsoever be the number, but the same question will arise in your mind. The question would have remained the same. Why? So remember one thing, any question, and for that matter, all questions are absurd. With every answer, the question will still remain the same staring at you. So the only way this master does, creates an energy field within the seeker that naturally the question dissolves on its own. And that is where the growth pattern, the, dis the life evolves. In make anything, the question will remain the same staring at you. So do not ask me why life moves in seven year cycles. When I opened my eyes, I found, observed, analyzed and realized that life moves in seven year cycles. For seven years are different than the second and the third and fourth. By the time one attains the age of 49, one should have been finished with that. After that, the cycles that remain up to 63 or 70, because it is said the normal, the lifespan of an individual is 70 years. So the last three phases, the phases of bliss and harmony. I have explained that first seven years are most important because of during that period the foundation is laid in the child and then if you do not disturb with the child but all the parents, all the religions are interested in grabbing the child as quickly as possible before he can open his eyes and understanding blossoms into him. Those first seven years are the years when you condition, you stuff the child with so many ideas and those ideas, whatever you stuff, go on haunting him for the rest of his life and go on distracting you from your own potentiality for the rest of the life. This will corrupt you and you will never allow to see the cl things clearly they always come like clouds in your eyes. Things are very clear. Existence is absolutely clear, but your eyes have layers upon layers of dust. And all that dust has been arranged in the first seven years of life, when you were so innocent, so trusting, that whatsoever you were told, you accepted as true. Later on, it will be very difficult for you to find whatsoever has gone into your foundation has become almost part of your blood and bones and your marrow. You will ask a thousand and one other questions, but you will never ask why the basic foundation, you will never doubt the basic foundation of your life. The first expression of love towards the child is to leave his first seven years absolutely innocent and unconditioned. Then the naturally he, his potential will start growing. Observe him growing. If he asks for an assistance, provide him. If he has a question arising or something he is not able to understand, he will ask you a question. Create that child can trust you child can trust you. It should not be imposed, but it should evolve out of the child and leave him completely wild for the first seven years. Your love will nourish the child in blossoming to his inner potential. There is no other beauty than seeing the children grow into their potentiality and they become what they growth pattern was instilled in them. What is the natural growth pattern? And